Thanks for joining me today at EMP Cycle Works. We're building a twin cam. It's a 103 high compression um, woods cam, fueling lifters, SNS crank. Let's do it. Starting this build off, installing the piston oilers. Um, both of these oilers get an O ring on the back side of the mounting plate. I usually use a drop of red Loctite on the bolts. The service manual calls for blue, but I just want to make sure these bolts are not going to come out inside the crane case. For one, debris is no good, and also the oil pressure will drop if these oilers are gone. Torque spec is 35 inch pounds. Now I use assembly lube on the main bearing pretty liberally, and also on the bearing race of the, the pinion shaft. And then we carefully install the crankshaft into the right side of the case. And be very, very careful here. Don't want to damage those bearings. And same thing on the left hand case. Gets a good amount of assembly lube. And on the race. And for the crankcase sealant, I use 3 Bond 1211. It seals up crane cases really well, and it's not all stringy. The downside is that it's white, so you just gotta make sure you double check and clean up everything after it's done, because a little bit of it is gonna squeeze out. But here, these are machine surfaces, so you don't need to put a lot of this on. The more you put on, the more it will squeeze out, and you don't want anything inside the crank case that can come loose and clog up oil, oil passages. And then carefully fit the left side case over the bearing. Just shake it a little bit, usually it'll fall into place. And then the engine case bolts get blue Loctite. And then I'll tighten them down by hand and the torque spec is 19 foot-pounds final. in the pattern the service manual calls for. And then check to make sure the... I'm not having any binding here. And unfortunately, these rods feel like they're binding, so I don't know what happened there, but time to install a brand new SNS crank. And it's the same procedure, so this is me with the brand new SNS crank installed. I don't know how I missed a tight spot in the rods, but I did, so unfortunately, we need a new crank. But here we go with the SNS crank, smooth as butter. This is going to be a good motor. It's very important to clean out the oil pan. In this case, we had a lifter bore failure, or a lifter failure on this bike that damaged the cam and the old lifter. So there's all types of metal and stuff in the oil pan that we need to flush out of there. See all that black stuff on that magnet is metal, steel. So here we are flushing it out, rinsing the top off here, and then I will rinse out the inside of it as best I can and uh, let let my parts washer flush this out for a, a day or two and then so it's a good idea to chase all the thread threaded bolt holes in the engine case and clean them out make sure they're nice and clean so our torque specs are going to be proper now we got to install the inner cam bearings and Jim's makes a good tool for this um, it's got a plate a threaded rod and an adapter for the bearing. Now the bearing gets pressed in, it has writing on the face, that's the side that you press on. Uh, that side of the bearing, that race, is actually a little bit thicker. 
so it can support the the pressure of pressing it in and then we just hand thread the knobs on to hold the plate in place and double check and make sure our bearing is sitting flush and then just tighten it down until it stops and and that's it the gym's tool has a stop on it to, so it stops at the right depth of bearing installation then just remove the tool and then the same thing on the left bearing now I'm gonna assembly lube everything and then I got this fueling oiling can to, to bleed the lifters to fill them up with oil but I can never really get it to work uh, what always works for me is is just sticking them in some oil and let them soak overnight and that'll that usually gets most of the air out of them Jim's has a vacuum tool that I had on order but it's been on order for about a year now so I want to get one of those eventually to make this easier you know we got three o-rings in the engine case here two for the plate and one for the pump and make sure you follow the instructions on whatever cam plate oil pump you have different manufacturers require different assemblies steps and in this case the oil pump o-ring I'm gonna put it on the oil pump the inner part of the body and put some assembly lube in there and make sure the oil pump body indexes into that o-ring properly and then make sure that everything on the oil pump needs to be lubed so assembly lube on the inner and outer rotors get them in there and, and time to the pinion this fueling pump has little dial pins that go on put those on lube up the separator plate and install the separator plate and then lube up the outer pump body and that will go on as well and then inner and outer rotors of the outer pump go on And usually you can just spin them and they'll go in pretty easily. Now time to install the cams into the cam plate so I get some assembly lube on them. Uh, these are nice woods cams. Uh, new chain getting lubed up. And then the cams on the inner part of the cams and on the outer part of the cams have two dots that you have to line up. Uh, they had to be in time before you line them up or install them into the cam plate I mean. And this is very important, so just take your time, get them lined up, and once they're lined up, the two dots there, um, we lube up the cam plate, and then we can install our cams into the cam plate. This is a later model twin cam, so there's no bearings here. Uh, everything is bushings on the cam plate, so it makes installation much easier. And I'm gonna do my best to fill up the oil pump with engine oil so this thing doesn't run dry when we turn it on and then the inner tensioner gets a assembly lube and then the bolts get blue loctite and torque to 120 inch pounds and now we can fit the cam plate onto the bottom end nice and easy my feeling doesn't want blue Loctite on their oil pump bulbs so instead they want ARP ultra torque assembly lube so we put that on the threads and on the head of the bolt but the case bolts I put blue Loctite on just to drop you don't need to go crazy but again we don't want these bolts to come out so I uh, put everything in there finger tight spin the motor to the center of the oil pump now do the cam plate bolts first in crisscross pattern by hand, spin the motor again, and then torque the the cam plate bolts to 120 inch pounds. Spin the motor over, and we're doing just making sure the oil pump is centered. And now I'll do a crisscross pattern and tighten the oil pump bolts by hand. Spin the motor again, and then torque everything to 60 inch pounds, or the oil pump bolts to 60 inch pounds. Spin it again, and then final torque of 120 inch pounds, and spin it again making sure that there's no binding 
when we're installing or we're torquing these things down. Uh, we want the oil pump to be centered on the pinion shaft is the goal here. And as long as everything spins freely, oil pump is installed properly. All right, next thing we did set up the cam sprocket spacing. So the pinion sprocket and the cam sprocket need to be within about eight thousandths of each other. That way the camera, the chain runs true. true. So I have this little tool that locks them together. It lets me torque these bolts without having the primary on. Usually I'll just use the rear brake, but the tool is nice in this situation. So I'm just going to do the 25 foot pounds on both of them here. Remove my tool and put my straight edge on across the two gears. And I don't want to be able to fit an 8,000 feeler gauge in there. So in this case, I have about 30 thousands worth of gap. So I need a different cam spacer. And that's the big washer behind that sprocket. And in this case, I didn't have the right one, so I had to order one. But when you finally get the right one in, you install it and, and uh, check it the same way. And as long as an 8,000 feeler gauge doesn't fit in, then we're good. And now we install our lifters. And they've been soaking in oil, so they should be pretty well bled. And I had Dark Horse do these lifter bores, so everything is really tight, really solid. Just under 1,000's clearance. And I like to spin the motor and make sure everything is... Or spin the cam and make sure the lifter is moving up and down freely. And then we put the anti-rotation pins on. And again, I'm spinning just to make sure everything's... Nothing's going to bind. Then install the gasket and the lifter blocks and the bolts get blue Loctite and are torqued to 120 inch pounds. So I'm building our twin cam here and we got brand new pistons and we have our cylinders machined to accept the uh, um, 10 thousandths overbore. So we just got to verify that the piston to valve clearance or the piston to cylinder clearance is good and uh, I'm going to show you how I do that. So this is a dial bore gauge and uh, basically this is a comparative measurer or a measurement tool that, that does comparative measurement. So we use the dial indicator here to get a reading of the size of the, the bore by zeroing out the dial indicator. And I'm going to want to take measurements in three different spots. And so I want to use the smallest measurement. Three different spots on two different um, surfaces, so 90 degrees from each other on the cylinders. So you have it set to the smallest amount. As the dial indicator spin turns, the farther it goes clockwise will be the smallest point. So these cylinders are about half a thou out around, but I don't have torque plates on them. And not having torque uh, torque plates uh, actually distort the cylinder. So when it's bolted together, the cylinder is going to distort more than it's different from its free um, freestanding version here. So half a thousand there is is, is, uh, is acceptable. Is, is very good probably too. I don't have the torque plates here. I have them in my machine, my machine shop getting another set machined. We measure the piston, then set our dial bore indicator to that. Let's 
zero. One, three. One, three. See the money. Okay, we are really close. So yeah, about about three and a half thousand measuring like this. So without having the torque plates on there spec so we're good you know we need to find out our um, our ring end gap here so CP Carrillo perform, provides a instruction seat sheet on on the specs for for these for these rings here so it's the bore for the top ring it's the bore times four and a half thousand so it's three point eight eight five times 0 0.0045. 17.4, I'm gonna round up to 18,000 will be the target. And then the second ring is four to eight thousandths bigger than that. So we're gonna go 22 on the second. And how we go about this is place the ring in the cylinder and we're gonna use the piston to make sure that it is square to the bore. And then this is our gap, so we're looking for 18 thousandths. So what we're gonna do is take our 18 thousandths feeler gauge, and uh, doesn't does not fit. Try 15 thousandths. It does not fit either. Okay, so we got a good amount to, to cut here. Cover up my motor and my other parts. And I'm gonna use my piston ring filer here. to grind the surface. And the goal here is to make a square, a square cut. And once we make our cut, once we make our cut and our gap is square, we're gonna use a stone, get rid of the burrs that the ring filer creates. And then we're gonna do the same thing. Fifteen thousandths just fits. Eighteen thousandths fits as well. Let me see. Nineteen. Okay, Nineteen does not go, so we're at eighteen thousandths. So that's perfect. And then the same thing with the second ring. You can tell the second ring because this one has a dot on the top. And the inner edge, the bottom of it is is beveled, and that's so when the piston comes down, it'll force the piston ring out into the cylinder walls. So we want twenty two thousands here, and they're too tight. Same process. Deeper. Twenty two thousand feeler. Now the oil rings are the same. Basically, we just got to make sure that there's Fifteen thousandths clearance here. Generally, these are pretty good, a little bit more than fifteen thousandths, anyways, and it looks like it is. So yeah, more than fifteen thousandths. So the oil ring is good. Next oil ring. And 
is good. So rings are good. Same same process on the next cylinder. And then we get to clean everything up and uh, get ready for final assembly. Thanks for watching and be sure to watch out for part two where we assemble the top end and finish up the cam chest. If you like the video, make sure you hit that like button. And also for more content like this, be sure and subscribe because we've got a quite a few pretty cool engine builds coming up and I wouldn't want you to miss anything. Thank you very much for watching EMP Cycleworks.